President Trump understands, at least on a shallow level, that he's really flubbed this coronavirus thing. And so he and his inner circle have come up with a new messaging strategy around coronavirus, and it's really something. His advisors are looking to reframe his coronavirus pandemic response, and they want to, quote, convince Americans that they can live with the virus. You know, except for the many, many, many who don't. But anyway, um, the White House officials are hoping that Americans will, quote, grow numb to the escalating death toll and learn to accept tens of thousands of new cases a day. Well, the joke is on them, Viviana, because I fear that much of America has already grown numb to the death toll and has come to accept tens of thousands of new cases. We're, we're going to have more on this in just a second. But what do you think about this as a strategy? Just hunker down and don't talk about it and hope that people move on. I think you are right that everybody has kind of already learned to deal with it. We know that this is going to be a problem, but the strategy is so familiar because I feel like several boyfriends have tried it on me before. <laughs> Gaslighting. Mm -hmm. It's new and improved. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it can kill you, apparently. Um, you know, we do need to live with it. That's why we need masks. That's why we need Dr. Fauci to listen to him. Mm -hmm. it, it's This is not something that's going to... Um, be dealt with without national leadership. It yeah. just, I mean, unless we get to the place where we do lose the 2.2 million people that we initially, that he said we're gonna save. Mm -hmm. Well, it's getting kind of close on the margins there, Trump. Yeah. And, um, you know, personally, I lost my tia abuela, which is my, my grandmother's sister, her oh, twin wow. sister, her mother and her brother to the Spanish flu of 1918. I mean, these, this decimates families. So the fact that we just have a leader who just, it's fine, it'll go away, it'll go away. Meanwhile, getting tested daily, everyone around him is in some sort of quarantine or blocked. It, it's really disgusting that we have gone to this far in this country where we blatantly disregard people who cannot afford to protect themselves from this virus. We're talking about our essential workers who are, you know, this is, this is capitalism, this is predatory capitalism on its highest tilt. Yeah. Just yeah. literally exploit all of these bodies for our own political gain. It is it is pretty easy to just say live with it when you are effectively the most protected bubble boy in the universe. Like that everyone who comes near you is going to be tested. And you don't get that benefit. I don't get that benefit. Um, but let me give you a little bit more about the strategy. The goal is to convince Americans that they can live with the virus, that schools should reopen, professional sports should return, a vaccine is likely to arrive by the end of the year, and the economy will continue to improve. There are issues with literally every section of that sentence. The idea that a vaccine is going to come by the end of the year is nice to think about and could happen. More right. resources are being put into this vaccine than the development of literally any vaccine in human history, but that is no guarantee that it's going to happen. And we know that even in the best of times, it takes years to put together a vaccine. So we'll see. And the idea that the economy will continue to improve, you can like, you can cross your fingers and close your eyes and hope that that's going to happen. But if cases start exploding even worse than they already are, and if deaths start to reflect the rise in cases, that is going to have an effect on the economy, whether, whether they want it to or not. It already is. I mean, we're getting to the end of the eviction moratoriums. We're getting to uh, the end of credit cards waiving their minimum balances. We're getting to the end of you know these protections for missed payments, et cetera, et cetera, for mortgages. Things are gonna come to a screeching halt very soon and we have no way to protect ourselves as a nation. If we think back to how this nation reacted to the polio crisis mm -hmm. and the leadership, not just national leadership, global leadership that came together to solve this problem, had we not, who knows where we would be as a society, as a global society. I mean, it was killing people, you know, uh, disfiguring people, doing yeah. all kinds of stuff. And we are not taking this seriously. Yeah. And we're seeing that disfiguring now, that even people who are lucky enough to survive an infection with COVID-19 can have lifelong um, ramifications from that. They might need lung transplants or transplants of other organs and things like that. Um, I can see people in the chat talking about the fact that in the last 24 hours or so, there is uh, increasing evidence in Texas that the... Uh, coronavirus is mutating and becoming even more contagious. That doesn't mean also more deadly. It could be a less deadly version. Fingers crossed again. It's nice to just hope that the best is going to happen. Um, and people are talking about how countries that have done a bad job on this, like uh, like America, like Brazil, like Bolsonaro is now diagnosed as positive for COVID. Maybe that's what it will take for Trump to take this seriously, is for 
him Hasn't he had it twice now? Hasn't he? I mean, God only knows. We do know that uh, the girlfriend of, um, you know, one of his kids, not necessarily one of his favorite kids, but the girlfriend of one of his kids has it. Maybe that's close enough to get through, um, but I don't count on it. And uh, I want to read one more quote from this write-up about their strategy. One senior administration official said Americans will have to, quote, live with the virus being a threat and goes on to say, quote, they're of the belief that people will get over it. Or if we stop highlighting it, the base will move on and the public will learn to accept 50,000 to 100,000 new cases a day, which is roughly what Dr. Fauci had been saying recently uh, we could hit. It's entirely possible that we're already hitting that. We're just not finding it because we're not doing quite enough testing. In terms of that stop highlighting it, they've been doing their best for literally months at this point to stop highlighting it. But what we're not going to do, hopefully in the media at large, but I can only really speak for the damage report of the Young Turks, is we are going to continue to highlight it. And not let people forget that this was one of the biggest domestic government failures in the history of the United States. Huge. Absolutely huge. For more political news, breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.